Hey guys, Happy New Year. So today I wanted to do a video on skincare. Now this is not like a whole skincare regimen video. Um, if you guys want that, let me know. But um, I noticed on Snapchat whenever I share my skincare routine or masks that I'm using or things like that that I just do um, on a regular day basis. Um, and you guys have a lot of questions about it. So I wanted to kind of compile all these little, I guess, no-brainer tips um, into one video so you guys can just check it out and make the necessary changes that you may have to to incorporate some healthy habits into your skincare regimen. So let's get started with the first one. So number one, I would always, always, always recommend, and I feel like this is the most important, wash off your makeup at night. I know at the end of the day, after work, school, partying, it is so hard to get up, go to the sink, and wash your face. I heard like a statistic that um, if you don't wash your face at night, um, it ages your skin about seven days. And just imagine if you do that like, five times a month. Do the math. That's 35 days. So you're aging yourself about a month in advance. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but I mean, these are things that I look at and I will never, ever, ever go a night without washing my face. So um, I just wanted to bring up some tips that would help you guys at night. So number one, if you're coming home from somewhere and you're, you're in a car ride or something, grab a makeup wipe. I always rave about the Neutrogena makeup wipes that I absolutely love. Um, it's the little ones in the blue tin. I don't have it with me, but in the little blue wrapper. Um, they have a whole bunch of different kinds. They have ones that are like extra calming. They have sensitive skin ones and I guess I mean I'm cringing saying this but I guess if you don't want to make it to the sink you could stop right there but I would never do that and I wouldn't recommend it but I'm just saying I guess it's better than just sleeping with your makeup than not there's so many different products on the market I know just the other day I talked to you guys about this Garnier micellar water I rave about the Bioderma one but I recently came across this while I was at the drugstore and I just thought let me try it out and I'm thoroughly amazed like this stuff is so good and it's free of um, oil, alcohol, and fragrance. So it's actually something good for your skin. And a lot of you guys have snapped me back and told me that it made your skin feel super soft and smooth and it removed everything. Literally, I tried this with waterproof mascara and it's taken everything off. So this is definitely a good one that you guys need to try out. I think it comes in two different types, but um, this is the waterproof one. Now, another thing you could use instead of a cleanser or, or sorry, not instead of a cleanser, instead of like a micellar water or a makeup remover or a makeup wipe, is a cleansing oil. This is the one that I've been using lately. It's the Tatcha One Step Camellia Cleansing Oil. And basically, instead of using a makeup remover or a makeup wipe, you would just put this all over your face on a dry face on top of makeup and just kind of massage in the oil and it kind of just lifts up all the makeup from your skin and you just rinse it off with water and then you would go in with your cleanser. So if you feel that your makeup is really not getting off with um, just the cleansers and the liquid makeup removers that you're using, try something like a Clarisonic. I've had mine for a few years now and I kind of go in and out and using it. Um, sometimes I use it, sometimes I stop, sometimes I do, sometimes I go. At the moment for the blast, I would say mm, like four or five months, I've been using the Clarisonic and I think this one is the um, extra pore cleansing one, but they have so many different brush heads. So definitely take a look. You can find it at Ulta, Sephora and all those sites, even online if you wanted to buy it online. So definitely take a look at that and remember, do not go to sleep with your makeup on. Crucial, do not do it. <laughs> Okay, skincare tip number two. So I would say um, the next thing to do would be not to wash your face in the shower. Now, some of you may be kind of taken aback by this statement, but the thing here with taking a shower is that we all love a really nice, warm, steaming hot shower, and those type of temperatures are not good for your skin. It's not good for your body either, but especially your, the skin on your face, you don't wanna just immerse it into hot, really hot temperatures because it's drying out your skin. Now, if you already have irritated skin, if let's say you have acne prone skin, if you have really um, red skin or like rosacea or an issue like that, you do not want to put your face under hot steaming water because although it may feel good, it's really not good for your skin at all. So I would recommend washing your face before going in the shower. So in lukewarm water, put the water on, get your skincare going and use your cleanser, your Clarisonic if you have to. And then if you want to hop in the shower right after that then just avoid your face going under the water because again like I said you don't want to overly dry your skin out you want to keep it hydrated and moist and that's how you keep your skin youthful so that's the second trick I would definitely suggest you all start to do 
Number three, I recommend changing your pillowcase. Now this seems like something that's kind of like a no-brainer, you know, you change your sheets every two weeks or so or every week, whatever you do, um, but a lot of people don't really do that. Now your pillowcase is the place that harbors all this bacteria. Remember, when you're going to sleep at night, you're, there's cell turnover, your dead skins start to flake on your pillowcase and wherever you sleep, on your bed sheets, everywhere, and it's kind of gross to talk about, but it's a true thing. And now if all those dead skins are sitting on your bed sheets and on your pillowcase and you're constantly every night sleeping on top of that your skin is kind of almost like consuming that bacteria and in warm places like when your bed is super cozy and warm at night um, it sounds really gross but it's a perfect spot for bacteria to harbor itself and to multiply why because bacteria grows in warm climates so if you think about it that way I think you might want to change your pillowcase more often than not at least flip the pillow like every few days or something like that especially if you're someone who um suffers from acne or you have acne prone skin and you're always breaking out you have clogged pores definitely try this trick and even change your pillowcase every day and i promise you you will see a difference in your skin because number four okay so we all wear makeup what are you using to put those products on your face makeup brushes and makeup tools like beauty blenders makeup brushes things like that you want to make sure you're washing that why because that's another place where it harbors bacteria let's say you're using a foundation brush one of those like kabuki style foundation brushes and you're constantly swirling on your face that also is a form of mild exfoliation and the dead skin cells are kind of coming off of your skin if you haven't already exfoliated it or toned it and cleansed cleansed it and all that good stuff so just think about all the bacteria that you're putting on your face now if you're using that multiple times I would say at least wash your makeup brushes once a week if you're someone who has super sensitive skin or really irritable skin or acne prone skin and you still feel like that's not doing it for you wash your brush every day if you're using a beauty blender you should anyway be washing it every day so go ahead and try that and see if it makes a difference in your routine because I know we all get lazy and it's just such a task to do it all but if we want to look beautiful it takes a little effort also in your makeup touch-up bag let's say you go to work and go to school and you have like a little makeup bag and you have a compact or you have like a special like travel size brush that you keep in your bag that is also another place where it's harboring bacteria because you're using it throughout the day which you already have the bacteria on your skin and now you're constantly reapplying product every single day especially if you have those little sponges that come in compacts and like powder compacts or if you have those little mini brushes and things like that and you're constantly using it on top of like skin that the oil has already surfaced on and things like that you're just adding to the bacteria growth and it's really not good for your skin you're clogging your pores and you really have to either replace those or wash it out every few days or at least once a week something better than what you're currently doing will immediately show you some kind of a difference in your skin so definitely try that out and let me know how it goes for you so now for the fifth and final step I would just say a general rule of thumb kind of knowing the procedure in applying your products now it's easy to just slap on the products and if you know the method that works for your skin type then that's awesome that's great for you but sometimes we kind of forget so just as a reminder um, when you first cleanse your skin it's the cleanest that it will be as soon as you finish cleaning your skin it's best to if you're not using any treatments like acne products or spot treatments and you're going straight into your moisturizer or toner go ahead and tone your skin right away your skin is at its peak level of hydration and you want to just add any bit more of hydration to it or clean off any residual dirt and grime that's already sitting on the skin. So I would recommend as soon as you finish cleansing, go ahead with a toner. I think a toner is super important, especially if you're someone who has skin concerns that you'd like to tackle. For me personally, um, I did suffer from acne for a little while and I can do a whole separate video on just things that I thought that worked to, you know, have the acne just kind of subside and just keep it at bay um, and keep my skin kind of clear. But um, again, like I said, I can do a separate video for that if you guys are interested but um, I started using a toner many many years ago now when I had acne prone skin I was using the Dickinson's witch hazel which I think you can find like at Walmart Walgreens it's like under five bucks and it's super good because it kind of just cleans the skin and the witch hazel has all these properties that clean the pores and make sure after cleansing that you're starting with a clean base again so you know it's just one more extra step you can take in ensuring that your pores are clean and you're not adding any bacteria or anything to already irritate irritated acne prone skin so for now um, I suffer from a little bit of redness on my cheek area and it's just something I've always had even as a child so 
So um, I kind of wear makeup and cover that up, but to kind of subside it and help it even more, I use something like a rose toner. The one that I'm currently using is this Rose Petal Witch Hazel, and it's by Thayer's. It's a completely natural brand, and it has absolutely no parabens, no sulfates, nothing in it. So I kind of feel better about that. Um, I'm slowly, I guess I'm slowly trying to transition my a lot of my skincare and makeup into more natural products because I just feel like all those things we're putting into our skin, it's absorbed, and you know, we just want to be our healthiest that we can possibly be, right? Um, I know makeup and products can be so tempting, but sometimes reading the ingredients in the back is super key. So for this one especially, I know it really helps my skin. Um, I notice every time I, that I use it, and even just over the course of however many months I've been using it, um, my skin just looks a lot more even, meaning I don't have that immediate redness that as soon as I come out of the shower or if I apply any products on my face, this like patch of redness is there. So definitely try a toner that is catered to your skin type if you have acne prone, I again recommend the Dickinson's Witch Hazel, which you can find for under five bucks. And I definitely see that that works. Um, I would not recommend putting like straight alcohol in your face. Why? Because that's super drying. Um, so definitely don't do that. But maybe something with benzoyl peroxide or something like that to help any acne prone skin is definitely great. And if you also need something like calming or for sensitive skin that kind of helps with the irritation like me, then you can definitely try this one out. I really like it. I'm about like... I have a little bit left, so I definitely have to replace this soon. But definitely adding a toner to your skincare regimen is key. And after you add your toner, put on your acne products or any kind of treatments that you're using. And I would say at least keep it on for 15 minutes before going in with a moisturizer. If you really can't do that, try maybe five minutes, but I would definitely, the longer the better. And then add your moisturizer on top of it. So try that out and let me know how it goes. I really, really, really hope this video helped you guys. Um, they're just five really quick, easy tips that'll maybe just remind you to keep them in mind during your skincare routines or just like reformulate your habits and look at what you've been doing and I hope this was kind of an eye-opener and as well as something that you guys could learn from so let me know in the comments below some tricks that you guys do that ensures really clear skin and maybe you can share it with everyone here that's watching and myself so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time let me know your suggestions if you want me to do like a, a video for acne prone skin or anything like that because I suffer from acne and kind of in my adult years not so much in my teenage years so I definitely have a thing or two that I might be able to teach you and help you guys out with so let me know in the comments again subscribe if you haven't and give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you guys next time bye